right, everybody, welcome back. What if a nutrient found in oranges and bell peppers could help you boost testosterone naturally, especially when stress, age, or lifestyle is dragging it down? What I want to share with you here today is the latest research on how vitamin C is actually supporting and boosting testosterone levels naturally in men and women, improving men's sperm quality and hormonal balance. Let's dive into today's show. So we have to understand is that testosterone in the body itself is greatly affected by oxidative stress. That is the stress that you get from eating too frequently, eating too close to bed, having a high calorie, hard to break down meal, going for really high intensity based exercise, consuming alcohol, really anything in life can create oxidative stress. The more stressful it is, the more free radicals it creates from the oxidative stress. So the goal isn't to eliminate stress completely from life. It's just to be able to balance. It's always about balance in life. So our goal with actually improving testosterone is looking at what are all the oxidative stressors for all the men in our practice that we're working with? And then it comes down to, okay, well, they're not going to stop exercising and we don't want them to anyways. Are they doing too much? Like, are they training for a marathon or a bodybuilding show and their testosterone levels are just massively depleted? Well, we can help with that, right? Like we can still help with all of those things by reducing oxidative stress. So improving sleep, improving anti-inflammatory nutrition, and also dialing in their nutritional supplements. The one that we're going to talk about today is vitamin C. So vitamin C, and I'm going to give you, these are all science-backed. So the first one I want to sh share with you is that we can improve testosterone and its role in libido, energy, muscle, mood, and fertility by reducing some of that oxidative stress. And we're going to do that with vitamin C, which has been known to reduce reactive oxygen species, uh, damage cells, and help the specific cells within the body that produce and make testosterone. So vitamin C, if you're not familiar, is an antioxidant. Its main job is to squelch oxidative stress or free radicals. The first study I want to share with you demonstrating this uh, was done in 2023. And it used ascorbic acid. It was called ascorbic acid is associated with favorable hormonal profiles among infertile men. And so here's what, and again, I'm going to link all of these for you at stephencabral.com slash 3527. So you can dive deeper into the research yourself. So this was a cross sectional study. It was done with 300, uh, 302 men that were having difficulty conceiving. Uh, they measured the ascorbic acid levels and they looked at the reproductive hormones such as testosterone, luteinizing hormone, follicular stimulating hormone or follicle stimulating hormone, et cetera. What they found was the higher the vitamin C in the blood or the uh, on the lab test, the higher the total testosterone among men over 41.6 years old. And the lower the luteinizing hormone, which is important because it's a feedback loop, right? So if you have low luteinizing hormone, the body basically says, oh, we have enough testosterone. Amazing, right? So really great study. I'm going to share with you exactly how much was used in these studies, how much to use in just a moment. All right, another study one I will go over is again, men trying to boost their testosterone, working on infertility. And these individuals took 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C twice daily, so 2,000 milligrams for the day, also known as two grams. They did it for two months, and they looked at their semen sperm overall quality parameters before and after. After two months, sperm count rose from 14.3 to 32.8 million per milliliter, which is a remarkable increase, right? We're talking about more than a doubling. So the motility improved from 31% to 60%, which again is basically a doubling. And it is uh, like normal morphology for sperm motility is between 43 and 67. They went from 31, which is low sperm motility, all the way up to 60%, which is not only normal, on the high end of normal. So that's remarkable. In two months with two grams of vitamin C, that's it. Uh, 1,000 milligrams twice a day. All right, so let's go over just a couple others. This one is an animal-based model, and it was done actually quite some time ago. And it looked at... Um, rats and hyperglycemic rats, so mice-based studies, and why they were looking at this was higher blood sugar. A lot of men are dealing with elevated levels of 
healthy blood sugar, meaning like maybe they're not type two diabetic yet, but they're dealing with imbalanced blood sugar that's also affecting their testosterone levels, right? Because it reduces testosterone and it can impair luteinizing hormone and increase obviously oxidative stress. So they exposed these lab mice to variable levels of stress. They gave them vitamin C and they saw significantly greater testosterone levels versus the stressed rats without the vitamin C. So pretty amazing. They were doing better in terms of antioxidant repair and less damage in the body. All right, another study for you. Protecting the cells in the body that actually produce testosterone. That was a pretty amazing one. I'll, I'll publish that one that was on front, Frontiers. Another one showing reducing rocket reactive oxidation species and improving antioxidant defense. Why that's important is that it's not just about testosterone. It's also about how can we best do our, to do our best to fight off things like cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, and much more. The last one I'm going to link up for you is on restoring hormonal feedback loops. The higher the vitamin C in the body and the lower the luteinizing hormone, what we have then are the body then beginning to repair and produce healthy natural levels of testosterone without any hormone replacement therapy. All right, so how, I mean, this is a bunch of studies and they're all really quality. Some are in humans, some animal-based models, all stating the same thing. How much was used? Typically, most studies was two grams per day. In my practice, I like to do that at 500 to 1,000 milligrams maximum per dosage. So you're looking at two to four times per day. Again, in our practice, it's really simple because vitamin C can be taken in the morning, a buffered one like alkalizing vitamin C on an empty stomach, or you can take it with your electrolytes with your first water for the day. Take in about a gram, half a gram to a gram. A lot of people just like to do 500 milligrams, which is like, I know people say, well, that's really the max you can absorb. Well, the max you can absorb is the max you can absorb. And I know it's a little tongue in cheek, but it depends on the amount of oxidative stress in your body, the amount that's able to be utilized. But I agree, somewhere between, somewhere around 250 milligrams um, to one gram is probably going to be best, but we'll use higher dose vitamin C in various scenarios, but just assume 500 milligrams to a thousand milligrams, which is a half to one gram is going to be great. Do that two to four times a day. In our practice, we do two to three grams of vitamin C per day for most individuals for life. It's a very inexpensive vitamin. We use full spectrum vitamin C, which is a capsule form. It includes acerola berry and a lot of, of the natural, I'm using that in air quotes, variations or versions. Versions, that's about a half a gram or so. Or you can use the alkalizing vitamin C, which is a powder, and then you can just dose dependent on how you like it for children or adults. Children are not going to get two to three grams per day. They're going to get like 100 to 250 milligrams once or twice a day. If, they, if you have kind of like middle-aged kids or so, call it like, I don't know, six years to 12 years old or so, my daughters get a about, yeah, about 250 milligrams a day of vitamin C. My wife and I get about two to three grams per day every day. That's helped my immune system tremendously, especially for me, someone who's more TH2 dominant. And it's one of the reasons why I think, I believe that I'm able to keep natural testosterone, high levels of natural testosterone going. So this is just, I know it's only one vitamin and I'm not a single vitamin, you know, individual. So it should always be part of you know, your protocol, you're using other healthy things like, you know, if you have lower testosterone, you can use daily meal support, which also includes zinc and boron. Yes, it has vitamin C, it has Tongat Ali, it has tribulus, it has other great things in it. So daily meal support, the supplement has all of those things, but then you also want to get it through food. And I know a lot of people say, how can I get it through food? How can I get it through food? I totally get it. I love that. I understand that you're getting you might be able to get, I guess, unless you're really going all in and taking like Camu Camu powders, but again, that's not food, it's a supplement, right? You're getting a couple hundred milligrams per day, most likely from your food, maybe a little bit more if you're having kiwi and citrus fruits and bell peppers. So that's a nice way to get it too. What I look for is everyone in our practice, we, we get them to eat a healthy meal plan. Obviously they're not perfect. That's okay. I'm not perfect either. And then we add on the nutritional supplements on top of that. So get it from food, but also you can get it from nutritional supplements and it's a game changer. It really is. So however you're using vitamin C uh, is great. Let's get it into the body. Let, it's, it's a simple one. It's inexpensive. It boosts the immune system. Just make sure you obviously you're going with a quality brand and, and it's going to help boost those 
uh, testosterone levels, that is for sure. What I would say is if you want to test your testosterone levels outside of having to have blood work run, run the stress mood and metabolism test. Because it's also going to give you the underlying root cause as to why your testosterone might be too low. It's going to show your DHEA, which is a feeder hormone to testosterone. It's going to look at your cortisol levels, which might be showing oxidative stress driving down testosterone. It's going to look at thyroid. It's going to look at vitamin D3, and you want to boost that, of course. And it's going to look at your blood sugar levels through hemoglobin and A1C and insulin. Best lab test out there. You can, you can, again, you can get it with any qualified integrative health practitioner. You can run it with our team at stephencabral.com slash hormones dash test. But I'll just link up everything here today. I can't link up nutritional supplements. You can find those at stephencabral.com slash shop, or of course, just work with your local provider. And again, everything will be at stephencabral.com slash 3527. That was how to use vitamin C to boost testosterone in a nutshell. Let me know if there's any questions. Have an amazing day. Share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.